There's a couple other electric aircraft startups out there today. What makes Beyond so special? <laughs> Beyond is special in a lot of different ways, but I would say three main things. First one is the market need. We are tackling ultra high net worth individuals flying private, and they have the willingness to pay even more to fly electric than just a regional aircraft. So this is what we call the must have and not just a nice to have. The second pillar is the level of maturity of the technology. We are relying on the maturity of the fuel cells, of the tanks, of the electric engine. We buy everything on the shelf and we integrate. And the third pillar is certification. We are doing a CS23, so it's a small aircraft. It could seem ambitious, but actually it's only a six-seater. So it's where, as a startup, you can certify the fastest. So this is like your Tesla Roadster, so to say. You start here, and then you grow and become mass market. Absolutely. Um, Alo, you have a lot of special characteristics. What do you think you bring to the Beyond team as a leader? Mm, that's a good question. I think, first of all, I, I bring the vision. Uh, why are we here? Where are we going? And how are we going to do it? So the vision, the vision is very clear today. It's aviation will be electric one day. The question is when? I love that. One of the first times I met you, we talked a lot about sport and how you like challenges. Um, and I want to ask you, how do you approach challenging moments in your life? When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut and a fighter pilot. So I have always been looking out of the stars and challenging myself. And sport was always a part of my life. And so sport is a way to challenge yourself every day and you just try again and again and again the same movement until you get there and then you push the bar a bit more and a bit more. So I'm not afraid of failure and we will fail and I have failed in the past. It's just you should fail on a few small steps and not the big ones. Love that. Um, I'll never forget when I entered your data room for the fundraise looking at the detailed program plan down to every week. 10 years into the future, it was a, a thing of beauty. Exactly. <laughs> What's your background? You mentioned that you wanted to be an astronaut. You know, you're an engineer by trade. You yes. know, a, any entrepreneur who's looking at you and gotten to the stage with your recent Series A announcement and this visionary company, what does it take to get here? Vision, daring, and um, dedication. Motivation for sure, but motivation can be lost. Where dedication, it's even more powerful than motivation. Uh, so about my background, I'm, I'm coming from a very small farmer village in the west uh, side of France, where I was just looking at the stars and doing sports, and I was quickly bored um, of what the limited possibilities over there. And it's already daring for, for them to go to the big village and do some studies there. And I said, I'm leaving, I'm going out of that. So by 17, I took my luggage and I went to Toulouse, the city of Airbus. And I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I will study aerospace and um, because I, love, I loved it. And um, so I went to Supayo, which is a school um, of uh, five different astronauts. You met our, uh, a friend of Giant, Richard Branson, um, and I think you made a comment about his dyslexia and something that he's been vocal about. Be interesting to hear that story from your perspective. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that I share with him. I am dyslexia, uh, and I carry that for 12 years of uh, back and forth. Every Tuesday, I was going to see the speech therapist, uh, trying to work harder than everyone else to have the same level. And that was a weight I had. And when I've met, uh, I've got the chance to, to meet Richard, he actually said, uh, I took this negative aspect that could, as a positive because that means that I'm, I have a way more developed intuition. Mm. And I realized that was also my situation, um, that I'm someone who, who loves as an engineer who, to be based on data, but then I have an intuition behind that. So I love to speak and relate on fact and science, but then to have a human aspect or client aspect behind that. And that's exactly what he put the right words on something that I carried. So I, yeah, special I, we spoke, yeah, a special moment. Other than partnering with Giant Ventures, what's been the most transformative part of the journey at Beyond Arrow for you? Building a team is always transforming, um, especially when you are hiring engineer better than you on every subject mm. 
uh, coming from all parts of the world. We are 10 nationalities now, so different culture. Um, I knew I wanted to do that, but I was not prepared mm. of uh, the daily change, changement it was going to do on, on me. And um, so I'm not answering your question with one event. I'm more saying being able to learn from the people around me, I think it's most of the, the, the most transformative uh, experience through Beyond Aero. It's clear you've earned a ton of respect from your team. They call you Capitan. <laughs> Capsen, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that my question around that is, with these incredible engineers, you know, hiring people that are sort of stalwarts of industry, who've been around, who've built, you know, sort of ama amazing aircraft, how do you earn and then sort of gain their, their trust and respect over time, in, in your view? It's two clear thing. First one is uh, I give them my trust day one. But when they are hired, we take sometimes too much time and too much interviews. Mm. But when they are setting one foot in the office, they have the trust. And that's a good way of starting. And the second is basically my role is that I don't pretend to know because of the age or be because of my personality. I don't pretend to know everything. But I am very strict on if they are in the company, they should put on my table plan A, risk, money. Plan B, risk, money. Plan C, risk, money. And since I have the view on sales, department, um, program, engineering, money and different things with plan A, plan C, plan B, I am the one with being able to choose. But I'm not the one coming to them and saying, do that or do that. And so I think that's how I am able to, I don't need to earn respect. Mm. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Mm. But I'm able to have my place among all of those crazy engineers. Exceptional people, yeah. Because I don't pretend to know over them. I'm yeah. asking them to provide me plan A, plan B, plan C. I hope that there are up and coming entrepreneurs and founders that are watching this uh, what advice would you give to them? <laughs> I have a very clear one. Take your ambition, multiply it by 10 and do it. <laughs> I feel people are not ambitious enough. Yeah. And people have told me that while I'm building an aircraft. And I was shocked when someone told me, you are not thinking big enough. And I'm like, look, I'm building an aircraft. And he told me, no, no, you are not thinking big enough. Mm. And that really triggered a lot of things on me. And I want to say that to everyone around me, our new founders, your ambition is not big enough. Take it and believe in yourself and do it even, even further. <laughs> you know, when you hear that, you don't feel down. You actually, it lights something in you. Yes. And I think that that's the thing that we saw in you at Giant. Thank you. Um, what's next for Beyond? And what's the vision for 10 years and beyond, if I might say? <laughs> <laughs> Well, in 10 years, um, if I dare to say, we will have a, a factory assembly line ramping up. Um, we'll have a first aircraft uh, certified and being uh, delivered on the, on the market. We will already have a, a second program uh, started, uh, so a bigger aircraft, mm. a different, different program that we already have in mind. Uh, we would be about 300, 400, depending on the, a few factors. And, uh, and we will be happy. <laughs> Just getting started. <laughs> yes. It's on, and I will be 30, 38, so not even middle of my career. So <laughs> I love that. I feel old now. Um, I love that banner, uh, aviation will be electric. It's something you've been, you've been saying for some time now, and it feels cool that ultimately the, the sort of the, the power will come from electricity, but also it feels like when I'm in the office, there's an electric feeling here as well. So <laughs> thank you. You're, you're off the hot seat. There's a couple questions I know that you have for me. Yes. Uh, did you want to go ahead and ask those? So I have a few questions for you. Um, what did you see in Beyond when you decided to invest? Why Beyond? A couple reasons. Uh, first was there was, we had looked at 30 aerospace companies that had some sort of sustainable propulsion system. And you had the best combination, what I call the Goldilocks, of incredible charisma 
and energy around the space, so vision and mission and presentation skills. But then when you peel back the layers of the onion, at every level, the, the, the level of detail was incredibly deep. And it was that combination for a seed stage company that was very, very rare. Um, and so we saw that dedication. Um, the other thing was that every single person that I talked to the team on was a missionary. They were so dedicated to you, to Hugo, to Val, and the long-term goal of making aviation electric. And we talk about these things in startups of kind of creating cults, and you had created a beyond cult, and that was really clear. The final thing was I really loved the go-to-market. We had seen a lot of aerospace companies trying to compete with Boeing and Airbus and going after commercial or regional travel, but there was this wide open market as an entry point in the business aircraft world where consumers were being shamed for their air travel, politicians were being shamed for their air travel, and there was a big opportunity to capture the zeitgeist with a sustainable aerospace company. And I think that those combinations combined and he brought the prototype to our office in Notting Hill, London <laughs> for our investment committee meeting, which we still talk about this to, our, to this day. There's never been a wow moment for a founder presentation as, as good as that. Um, every time I hear a presentation now, I'm like, well, you didn't bring the prototype to our office. so um, That was a bold move. Yeah, yeah I love that, that risk. And uh, what advice would you give us uh, as co-founders, but also what advice would you give to be on Aero? Yeah, so I think you know I grew up in Silicon Valley. I'm a bit of a, um, a, a historian, and I, I love the, sort of all the old stories of, of Silicon Valley and even the sort of growth of, of startups in San Francisco. And when Peter Thiel first met the Airbnb team, it was they were in a small office, and he made it crystal clear to Brian Chesky don't F up the culture. I'm not going to say the actual word. Yeah. Don't F up the culture. The magic or the je ne sais quoi, if I could say that, of Beyond is so special. It's a, nearly an entirely engineering team, very seasoned veterans all the way down to interns, and everybody's working incredibly hard at all hours of the day, and they're so tied to the mission. And all I would say is that this is like a beautiful baby that you <laughs> want to nurture and just keep, um, you know, as, as good as possible. Yeah. Um, the second thing I would say is, you know, the, as the levels of intensity increase, right, your, your problems go from once a month to once a week to once an hour to once a minute, but you get better at taking those punches, right? You've decided to become a boxer and you're not, it's not that you're not going to take any punches, but now you're better at dodging and weaving. So don't expect that things will get easier in time, over time. They will actually get significantly more difficult. You'll just become more proficient at dealing with those. Um, and the final thing is you and your co-founders have something incredibly special. And obviously the new executives who come on are, are also really special as well. But it's very rare that a co-founder team lasts a, as long as you did, and lasts far into the future. And the way that you nurture that relationship is truly the foundation of beyond. And I think that that is something that you cannot lose. Yeah. Um, and I think it really just permeates the rest of the, of the culture. Thank you. You're welcome.